Welcome to another video on Ivory Dang. In today's video, I would like to do a walkthrough with you on how to complete your first project on Free Code Camp, uh, responsive web design to build a tribute page. Uh, for this project, you want to pick a person or a character you want to create a web page tribute for using HTML and CSS. It's a nice review of all the lessons you covered previously. My walkthrough will take less than 10 minutes. However, the time it took me was actually longer because I had to Google or go back to certain notes. Um, so in this video, I will concisely condense the knowledge for your reviewing. However, you should feel free to pause the video at any point for your learning. You can essentially create the web page for anything, but uh, for the spirit of the exercise, I have chosen to create a tribute for Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Um, it was a close toss-up between three characters, Rock Lee from Naruto, uh, Zuko from Avatar, and Vegeta from Dragon Ball. For me, these characters represented something more as a kid. Uh, I never liked Vegeta, but as I became an adult, I grew to appreciate him as a character and I could relate more to his struggles. Uh, for those who don't know this character, uh, he was someone who in the series that continuously faced defeat and humiliation. Uh, whether it was to the villain or the main character, he never gave up. Um, this can be understood by someone who works really hard for something, keeps failing, but to push through the pain and suffering and to eventually become one of the most badass characters by the end of the series. And I found that really inspiring. For this project, there's nine tasks, so let's go ahead and jump to the first one. Okay, so starting from this page, under Responsive Web Design Projects, we'll click on Build a Tribute Page. It will bring us to this page. So then let's open up the CodePen Editor. We'll click here. Uh, in the drop down list, click on Tribute Page and then click Run Test. So right now, we haven't completed anything. Therefore, as you can see, we're still on step one. So let's just go back to the editor. Uh, we won't be using a lot of JavaScript, so we can minimize this window. Uh, and then we'll mainly use HTML and CSS, so we'll make these two windows bigger. So let's go back and look at our first step. User story one, my tribute page should have an element with a corresponding ID main, which contains all other elements. So in this first step, what it wants us to do is to create a div section. Div stands for a division element. They act like dividers to help you recognize your sections. It divides the document into sections so it makes it easier for you to work uh, when you want to style or format that specific section. So this first step is really easy. All we're going to do is create div and then the ID equal quotation main quotation and then arrow, uh, dash, div, and then close it with div. Okay, let's go back to our instructions and then move on to the next uh, story. So story two says, I should see an element with a corresponding ID title, which contains a string, for example, text that describes the subject uh, of the tribute page, for example, Dr. Norman Warlock. So then, the project wants us to uh, put some content and substance into our div section, uh, such as a heading. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a title for a page. Uh, you may remember that HTML can have up to six headings. Uh, we'll create heading one, uh, h1 for our uh, web page. So arrow, h1, and if you can remember, in the instructions wanted us to also add an ID to it. So h1 and then ID, equal quotation title and then quotation and then close it with an arrow and then we'll put in our text which is Vegeta uh, dash the true underdog and then we'll start again with arrow close it off of dash h1 and then arrow and then if we go to our drop down list and then we just run the test we can see here 3 out of 10 so we completed the first two stories so let's go back to the instructions. We're moving on to user story three. I should see a div element with a corresponding ID IMG dash div. So IMG stands for image. Therefore, it's most likely the project wants us to add an image to our web page. So let's first create a div section for our image. So within this, our initial div, we'll create another div within the div. Uh, so div so arrow div 
uh, id equal quotation img dash div quotation and then arrow and then we'll close this div off with arrow dash div arrow so then if we run the test we can see that we completed four out of ten of them now okay so let's go ahead and go back to our instructions to use the story for so which says within the img dash div element I should see an img element with a corresponding ID image so most likely the project wants us to add an image to our web page so we're just gonna go to Google images search up Vegeta and then we'll copy the URL of an image and then we'll go back here and add in our img element which will be arrow um, img and then add in our id equals to image and then quotation and then src which stands for source equals and then quotation and then we're just going to control v and paste that url we copied and then at the end we'll type in alt equal quotation and then a description of what we want it to appear in case the picture doesn't work so picture of Vegeta and then arrow so remember that the all at the end shows um, the message in case if the, the picture link doesn't work so our picture right now looks kind of big so we can also resize that as well uh, let's go back into the script and then we'll type in out width equal quotation let's do 20% of the original image and then quotation and then height equal sign quotation and then 20% of the original image as well and then quotation and then that should make our picture um, a little bit more uh, manageable so right now the white background is kind of blinding so let's do a quick adjustment to our web page to make it uh, easier to look at this is not required but it is a pretty nice review for our style element so at the very top uh, we can add an arrow style arrow and then we also want to close that off as well at the end uh, so arrow dash style arrow and then in the middle that's write instructions for our body so body and then bracket and then background dash color let's make that black and then semicolon and then color colon let's make the color of the font white and then semicolon and let's make our font family font dash family uh, colon calibri and then semicolon and then make sure that is closed off with a bracket okay so let's go back to our instructions for user story 5 which says within the img dash development i should see an element with a corresponding id img dash caption that contains the textual content describing the image shown in img dash div so most likely the project wants us to add caption to our image hence the img dash caption so within our div element for that image we'll just add the fig caption element with the id img dash caption so we'll add the text in between making a brief description of our character so what we're going to do is do arrow fig caption and then add in the id uh, equal sign and then quotation img dash caption quotation arrow and then we'll just write a text um, vegeta is a symbol that in hard times you can become stronger and make something out of yourself period it will be humiliating and shitty at first but eventually you will be a uh, power to be reckoned with period so and then we'll close it with arrow dash fig caption and then arrow so this should add um, this should add text caption to our picture we can tidy this up by using CSS to apply a width instruction to our IMG caption ID so here you can see that the ID is IMG caption. So if we go over to the CSS window, we can do hashtag uh, IMG dash caption. And then we can do bracket 
width and then colon 400 px semicolon and then close it with bracket and this should tidy up our text so that it aligns uh, with our picture so if we click our drop down list uh, and we run the test we can see that we completed six out of the ten so let's go back to instructions and move on to user story six which says I should see an element with a corresponding IAD tribute dash info which contains textual content describing the subject of the tribute page uh, so in this one the project most likely wants us to add um, wants us to add a paragraph that has information about our tribute character so let's use our p element which stands for paragraph and and write a little bit something about our character Vegeta. So we'll do arrow P and then ID equal to quotation tribute dash info quotation and then arrow and then we'll also remember to put P, uh, close P at the end so arrow dash P arrow and then in the middle of P uh, we can put our text let's make the first line bold so the arrow b arrow and then vegeta attributes and then arrow dash b to close it and then we can write a short bulleted list to describe uh, vegeta's attributes so we can use our element ul which stands for unordered list and then also at the end, we remember to close it with arrow dash ul arrow. And then in the middle, in between the uls, we'll add our bulleted items, which we will use our element li, which stands for listed item. So arrow li arrow, and then uh, we'll name his first attribute, which is resilience, and then arrow um, dash li to close that bullet. And then the next bullet, we'll do li again. And then we'll say fearlessness. And then close it with arrow dash li arrow. And then to the third bullet, we'll do arrow li arrow. And then we'll say persistence. And then close it with arrow dash li arrow. Okay, so if we click our dropdown and then we run the test, we can see that we completed seven of the 10. So let's head back and move on to our next story. Uh, in user story seven, it says, I should see an A element with a corresponding ID tribute link, uh, which links to an outside site that contains additional information about the subject of the tribute page. Hint, you must give your element an attribute target and set it to underscore blank in order for your link to open in a new tab. For example, target equals quotation underscore blank quotation. So now the project wants us to add a link to our web page. Um, for story seven, remember we can apply links either to our text or images. So let's make our image into a link by adding in our A element, which stands for anchor. We'll give it an ID as well as a target element for it to generate a new tab uh, when clicked on. So href stands for hypertext reference. So what we're going to do is just go to our uh, image script. So right above it, we'll add in uh, arrow and then a and then id equals quotation uh, attribute dash link quotation and then target equals quotation underscore blank and then quotation and then href which stands for uh, our hyperlink reference and then equal sign quotation and you know what we're going to do we'll add in a YouTube link for uh, Vegeta so I just copied one earlier and then we'll just do control V uh, to paste in that link and then remember, we'll close it with an arrow link after the quotation. And then at the very, we also want to close this A uh, at the end of the image as well. So we're going to do arrow dash A and then arrow uh, at the end of that image. 
So then if we click this, it should open us up to a new tab. Okay, so let's move on to our next set of instructions. So for user story eight, it says the IMG element should responsibly resize relative to the width of its parent element without exceeding its original size. Um, so for story eight, the project wants us to make our image responsive in size. We can do this by first setting the max width to 100%, uh, which means the image will be 100% of its parent. For this, we have to use our CSS box. So what we're going to do is, because our image um, here has the ID image in the CSS box, what we're going to do is start with hashtag and then image and then bracket and then max dash width and then colon 100% uh, semicolon which uh, means the image will always be 100% of its parent and then we're going to type in height colon and then auto semicolon uh, so this means that uh, the, the height of the image will automatically adjust with the width and then a third thing we're going to do is write display colon and then block and then semicolon and make sure that it's closed off with another bracket so the display block will make the element take up the entire width. So remember when referencing our IDs in HTML, we want to use the hashtag before the ID rather than a period. Okay, so let's move on to user story nine, which says the IMG element should be centered within its parental element. Uh, we essentially accomplished story number nine in our previous step uh, where we use CSS to make the IMG element occupy 100% of the parent element. So if we run our test, we can see that 10 of the 10 tasks are completed. So essentially we completed the project. Uh, so what you can do is copy the link up here and then if you paste it into the solution uh, box and just click submit, that should get you to the next project. So anyways, a lot of time and work went into this video, so if you guys found it helpful and would like to see more content like this, and I know it's cliche, but I would appreciate uh, you guys for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Uh, I provided the link to Free Code Camp and the online coding editor CodePen in the video's description below, so thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.